How often have you gazed at the night sky, marveling at the countless stars, and wondered if somewhere, someone or something is doing the same? This question touches on an age-old curiosity that has permeated human consciousness for centuries. As we stand on the tiny blue dot, our home planet Earth, we're enveloped by the vast expanse of the cosmos, infinite, unending and brimming with a sense of mystery that's as awe-inspiring as it is confounding. Out there, beyond the veil of our atmosphere, lies a universe that's immeasurably vast. A cosmic sea painted with a palette of countless galaxies, each one a whirling spectacle of stars, planets and cosmic dust. Each star, a sun, potentially hosting a retinue of planets. And each planet, a potential cradle for life as we know it, or perhaps life as we can't even begin to comprehend. Consider this, our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is home to an estimated 200 billion stars. And that's just one galaxy among the two trillion galaxies estimated to exist in the observable universe. The numbers are staggering and they suggest a tantalizing possibility that we are not alone. Yet, Despite the mind-boggling vastness of the cosmos and the seemingly infinite number of stars and planets, we find ourselves in a peculiar situation. A situation that has puzzled thinkers, scientists and dreamers alike. A situation encapsulated in a question posed by the physicist Enrico Fermi during a casual lunchtime conversation in 1950. A question that has since become known as the Fermi Paradox. The paradox is simple. If the universe is so vast and so old, with so many stars and planets, then where is everybody? Where are the aliens? So, if the universe is teeming with possibilities, why haven't we encountered extraterrestrial life yet? Welcome to the Fermi Paradox. Imagine a party where everyone's invited, but no one shows up. That's the Fermi Paradox in a nutshell. Now, let's break it down. Picture this. You're in a forest filled with a million trees. Each tree represents a star in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Around each star could be planets, like the branches of the tree. Some of these planets could be just right, not too hot, not too cold, where life could potentially thrive, like leaves sprouting on these branches. This is the basic premise of the Fermi Paradox. Named after the physicist Enrico Fermi, it's the apparent contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial life and the lack of contact or evidence for such civilizations. To further understand this, let's delve into the Drake Equation, a mathematical formula used to estimate the number of active, communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. It's like a complex recipe where we mix in factors like the rate of star formation, the fraction of those stars with planetary systems, and the number of planets that could potentially support life. When we stir these ingredients together, we get a number, a rough estimate. Even with conservative estimates, the equation suggests there should be a multitude of civilizations out there, possibly thousands or even millions. And yet, there's no definitive proof that any of these civilizations exist. Our cosmic party seems to be missing its guests. This brings us to the paradox. If there are so many potential civilizations, where are all the aliens? Why haven't we received an RSVP to our cosmic party? Why is there this deafening silence? Perhaps the distances between stars are too vast making travel or communication impossible. Or maybe civilizations rise and fall too quickly, missing each other in the cosmic night. It could be that advanced civilizations are avoiding us, like a hush falling over a room when an uninvited guest arrives. Or, as some suggest, maybe we're simply not listening in the right way, like trying to tune into a radio station but being slightly off the frequency. But the paradox remains. The universe is vast, ancient, and filled with stars and planets. The ingredients for life as we understand it, 
carbon, water, energy are plentiful. The laws of physics and chemistry are universal. Life on Earth started relatively quickly after the planet formed, suggesting that life might be common in the universe. Despite these staggering odds, we seem to be alone. This silence of the cosmos is what we call the Great Silence. Why this Great Silence? Could it be that life, as we understand it, is more unique than we think? Let's dive into a concept known as the Great Filters, which could potentially explain this cosmic conundrum. You see, the Great Filters are hypothetical hurdles in the path of a civilization's development. They are challenges so severe that they could halt the progress of a civilization or even lead to their extinction. Let's start with the idea that life itself is an extraordinary rarity. The universe, as vast and diverse as it is, operates under very specific conditions. The formation of a star, the creation of a habitable zone, the development of planets and the emergence of life are all events that require precise conditions. Imagine the universe as an enormous lottery and each ticket represents a different combination of conditions. The winning ticket in this case would represent the perfect conditions for life. But how many tickets are there? And more importantly, how many winning tickets? The universe is vast with an estimated 100 billion galaxies, each containing hundreds of billion of stars. With such astronomical numbers, one might think there should be plenty of winning tickets out there. But what if life's winning ticket is not just about the right conditions, but also about the right timing? What if life needs not only the perfect conditions, but also needs these conditions to last for a very long time? Now consider the possibility that life isn't the rarity. Instead, what if the real rarity is survival? What if civilizations, once they reach a certain level of technological advancement, inevitably face challenges that they cannot overcome? These could be self-inflicted challenges such as nuclear warfare, environmental disaster, or perhaps challenges from the universe itself like gamma ray bursts, or asteroid impacts. The concept of great filters suggests that at some point in the timeline of a civilization, there lies a hurdle that is extremely difficult to overcome. If this is true, it could explain why we haven't heard from extraterrestrial civilizations. They might have existed, but they didn't survive their great filter. This leads us to a rather unsettling realization. If life is common and survival is the real rarity, then we might still have our great filter ahead of us. On the other hand, if life itself is the rarity, then we might have already crossed our great filter, which is a more hopeful perspective. So, as we gaze at the stars, we are left with more questions than answers. Is life a cosmic rarity, or is it survival that's truly scarce? Are we alone in the universe, or are we just not hearing the cosmic conversations? Or perhaps life isn't the rarity, perhaps survival is. Or could we be living in a cosmic zoo, observed by others but left undisturbed? This is the crux of the zoo hypothesis, a fascinating take on the Fermi paradox. This hypothesis suggests that extraterrestrial life exists and is aware of humanity, but deliberately refrains from making contact. Imagine, if you will, an intergalactic nature preserve, where Earth and its inhabitants are observed like animals in a zoo. Advanced civilizations might choose to avoid contact with us, to allow for natural evolution and societal development, or to prevent cultural contamination. This hypothesis brings with it a host of ethical questions, if we are indeed being observed, what are the implications for our understanding of free will? If we are to discover this to be true, how would it reshape our perspective of ourselves and our place in the cosmos? But the zoo hypothesis is not the only possibility. Let's consider the transcension hypothesis. This hypothesis posits that advanced civilizations invariably leave our universe and thus become undetectable. 
They could do this by miniaturizing themselves or by engineering black holes to create private universes. The transcension hypothesis suggests that the reason we have not encountered extraterrestrial life is not because it doesn't exist, but because it has moved on to a realm beyond our reach or comprehension. In contrast to these hypotheses, which assume the existence of extraterrestrial life, we have the rare earth hypothesis. This theory posits that the emergence of complex life requires such a specific set of conditions that it's incredibly rare, perhaps unique to Earth. This could explain why we've not found evidence of life elsewhere in the cosmos. An offshoot of the rare Earth hypothesis is the planetarium hypothesis, which suggests we live in a simulated reality. Advanced civilizations might create such simulations to study the past or explore philosophical questions. If this hypothesis holds, then the aliens are not out there, but in here, controlling our reality. These are just a few of the possible explanations for the Fermi paradox. Each one presents a different perspective on the question of extraterrestrial life and each carries its own set of implications about our universe and our place in it. Are we alone or are we being observed? Has life elsewhere transcended beyond our understanding or are the conditions for life so specific that we are unique? Or are we living in a simulated reality created by those we seek? These are big questions and the answers are still out there waiting to be discovered. As we continue to explore the cosmos and delve deeper into these hypotheses, we may eventually find the answers we seek. These are but theories, each with its own merits and drawbacks. The silence of the cosmos isn't just a curiosity, it has profound implications for our future. The Fermi paradox, with its profound silence, challenges our understanding of life and our place in the universe. If the universe is teeming with life, why haven't we seen or heard anything? This question forces us to rethink our assumptions about life itself. Perhaps life, as we know it, is incredibly rare or unique. Maybe the conditions necessary for life to emerge and evolve are so specific and delicate that they've only occurred here on Earth. This possibility, while somewhat lonely, would make our existence incredibly precious, emphasizing the importance of preserving our planet and the life it supports. Equally thought-provoking is the possibility that civilizations tend to self-destruct before they can reach out to the stars. This would mean that every advanced civilization is running a cosmic race against time, balancing technological progress with sustainability. If this is the case, it underscores the urgency of solving our own global challenges, like climate change and nuclear proliferation. On a more hopeful note, the paradox could imply that we are on the cusp of joining a wider galactic community. Maybe advanced civilizations are out there, quietly observing, waiting for us to reach a certain level of technological maturity before making contact. This scenario would motivate us to strive for scientific advancement and peaceful global cooperation in hopes of one day earning our place among the stars. Regardless of the answer, the Fermi paradox reminds us of the vastness of the universe and our small place within it. It humbles us, inspires us, and kindles a sense of cosmic curiosity. It encourages us to never stop exploring, to keep reaching for the stars, and to continually strive for a better understanding of the universe and our place within it. Are we the first, the last, or the only? The answer could shape our destiny. Despite the silence, our search for extraterrestrial life continues, driven by our innate curiosity and the hope of not being alone. We are, after all, explorers by nature, always seeking to push beyond the horizon to uncover the secrets that the universe holds. Our quest for answers has led to the establishment of various projects and initiatives, each one more ambitious than the last. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, 
is one such endeavor. For decades, SETI has been scanning the heavens, listening for any signs of intelligent life. Their arsenal is a network of radio telescopes spread across the globe, each one acting like a giant ear tuned to the cosmos. Yet, despite their best efforts, the stars remain silent. But don't be disheartened. Silence in this regard does not signify absence. It may simply mean we're not listening in the right way or at the right time. Let's not forget, we're dealing with a universe that's around 14 billion years old. In the grand cosmic timeline, our existence is but a fleeting moment. So, it's entirely possible that we've missed the cosmic party or it's yet to begin. But hope is not lost. As we venture into the future, our technological capabilities are set to expand exponentially. New initiatives are being planned, like the Breakthrough Listen project, which promises to be the most comprehensive search for extraterrestrial communications yet. And then there's the James Webb Space Telescope, set to launch soon, which will peer deeper into the cosmos than ever before, opening new realms of possibilities. The search for extraterrestrial life is more than just a quest for aliens. It's a journey of self-discovery, a testament to our spirit of exploration and a search for our place in the cosmos. As we continue our cosmic journey, the question remains, where is everybody? <laughs>